Okay, so today we're gonna to be looking at some data and we're gonna use the data given to create a bar graph to display the data. So let's look at what data we're given. Let's read the question. It says, these data show how long some grade four students were able to stand on one foot. So what information are we given here? We're looking at what? Grade four students seconds on one foot. So we're looking at grade four students and how long they were able to stand on one foot. So these numbers are representing how many seconds they stood on one foot for, right? Yes. Okay, so let's do a quick estimate. How many numbers are in each row? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many students do you think were um, surveyed in total? 36. Okay, how did you get that? I did six up here. So six in each row, yeah. And six down there. And six down, so there's six in each row by six. So you did six times six equals 36. Okay, okay. so we can use that information after to check that when we tally up how many students we can make sure that it adds up to 36. So first we have to complete the table. We have to figure out how many students, so what is the number of students that stood on one foot for between one and 10 seconds? So anywhere between one and 10 seconds. Let's look at the, Zero. the chart. So none, good, you found that quickly. Let's look at how many students stood on one foot for between 11 and 20 seconds. Three. So between 11 and 20. One, so we have 12, 19, and we would include 20. So that would be three students. Okay, and we can see, are these numbers in order? They're in order from what? Least to greatest. From least to greatest. So this actually makes it easy to count, right? So let's look at 21 to 30. One, two, three, four, five, six. I know that I'm not gonna include 32 because that's greater than 30. So let's complete the chart. Okay, so we filled in the chart and the total number of students is 36, which we calculated earlier. So if we add up all of these numbers, it should add up to 36. So let's quickly do that. Three plus six plus six plus eight plus five plus five plus three is 36. So this, these numbers are correct. We've double checked them. Okay, so for part B, for question B, we have to make a bar graph with intervals to display the data. So what can you tell me about a bar graph? What's a bar graph? It's a graph that shows the data using rectangular bars. Excellent, and for this one, we are told that we're going to use intervals. Now, we're already given the intervals here. We already have a range of the, the seconds. So we know that the first interval is between one and 10 seconds. Okay, so the intervals are the distance between two endpoints on a scale, on a graph scale, and they should be equal. So we notice here that we have a range from one to 10, and then from 11 to 20. What's the range between one and 10? This okay. is an interval of 10, right? One and 10, there are 10 options to choose from. How about between 11 and 20? It's an interval of what? 10. Good, are all of these intervals of 10? Yes. Okay, so let's write down that we're using intervals of 10 and we double check them all because we have to make sure that the intervals on a graph should always be equal. Okay, so let's start by building our graph. Look at the numbers we have for um, numbers of students here. I have a zero, that's the smallest number. What was the largest number? Uh, eight. Right, so for each interval, the largest number that we counted was eight students. There, was only eight, there were only eight students um, who stood on one foot for between 41 and 50 seconds. So I need to pick a scale. My scale would start at zero, this is the smallest number, and it only needs to go up to eight. So, so what do we need to include when we are creating a bar graph? What are, what's the first thing that you're going to draw? 
I am gonna draw the Y axis. And so the the Y axis and the X axis. X axis. Good. And what are we gonna put on our X axis? What are we gonna put here? The, the intervals. The go. intervals. Excellent. Now, how many intervals do we have to include? We have to include eight intervals. Okay. So when my X and Y axis meet. That is always my point of zero. And I need to include eight intervals. So I have to see how much space I have here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we could start right at the edge because if we skip one, we wouldn't have enough room, right? And that's what you did? Okay. Okay, so what's the first interval? The first interval is one to 10. Good, one to 10, oops. And then what's next? 11 to 20. Good, we'll fill this in. Okay, and we're stopping at 71 to 80. So yes. this is going to help us draw our rectangular bars. Now we should be labeling what these intervals represent. So do you remember what they represent? They represent what? They represent this, the grade four seconds on one foot. Good, they represent how long the grade four student was able to stand on one foot. And this is important because I can't just randomly put numbers here. I need to indicate what those numbers represent. Okay, and what's gonna go on our y-axis? The y-axis is gonna go numbers going up. Right, the numbers of what? What did we count? We counted the uh, Mm, the numbers the number of, of students. Right, the number of students. So let's label that right now before I forget. Okay. Okay, so what was the greatest number of students we found for each group? Let's go back and look at our table. Let's think about that for a second. I know I'm starting at zero and I need to go up to eight. Would it make sense to say I'm going to count by ten? Zero, ten, 20 and then I have to fit in all the values in between here because everything's lower than 10. No. That would not be a very good scale, would it be? So remember the smallest number is zero and the largest number is eight. Let's see how much space I have here. Each line will represent something, a number, and I have to be consistent with my scale. I have to skip count by the same amount. So what would be a good scale to use? So what should we count by? One. Sure, let's count by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That way my graph is larger and it's not all squished at the bottom. If I counted by tens, everything would be squished down here, right? Yeah. Okay, so we have to go back and look at our table and we have to figure out how many bars I need to color in to represent each interval. So how many students stood on one foot for one to 10 seconds. We're looking at the first one. How many students? Zero. Zero, so I'm not gonna color any bars. How about for 11 to 20 students? How many students stood on one foot for 11 to 20 seconds? Three. So how many bars do I have to color? This three. is one, two, three. And I'm using the squares to help guide me. I know that if I color all the way up to here, that will represent three students. Again, this represents the number of students. So we're gonna complete this graph for each set of intervals. So I'm gonna just keep going back and forth to my chart to fill the answers. So 21 to 30 students is how, is, or where how many? 21 six. to 30 seconds. Six, so I'm gonna draw the bar all the way up to six. 31 to 40 seconds was how many students? Six. Six again. 41 to 50 students, Eight. and that was our highest number. So I know I didn't actually, I could actually continue this and write nine here, but I'm not gonna go past eight. Okay, 51 to 60 seconds was how many students? Five. Good, I'll color these after, 61 to 70. Five again, and then 71 to 80 was? Three. Three again, and this is a good visual representation to show how the data is spread out. I can visually see which interval was the highest. So I can say that most students stood on one foot for between 41 to 50 seconds, because this is the tallest bar, right? Yes. And it was eight students. Yeah. Excellent. 
Okay, and one last thing we need to make sure we always include in a bar graph is a title. So what does this graph represent? So that when we look at it, we know what this is uh, uh, information about. Good, grade four, four students. Standing. Standing on, on one, one foot. Excellent, and if I look here, I know that the numbers are referring to how many seconds. So that's included in my label for my axes. Always remember to label your axes and to include a title. And there we go. Excellent work.